Well, it helps if you don't go back. Don't go back and try to relitigate anything that you've lived before for a number of reasons. First of all, you don't remember as well as you think you do. And next, you don't have any power back there. The tendency is to go back and need it to be different in order to feel better now. And since you can't go back and make it be different, then you usually don't feel better now. You just practice the vibration of that. Sometimes it's a good vibration, and when you practice it, it serves you. But sometimes it isn't, and so it doesn't serve you. And so it's, it's good to be aware of which thoughts are serving you now and which thoughts are not serving you now. Just remember that the goal always, whether you're thinking about the past or the present or the future, is to find a way of seeing it as your inner being is seeing it, which means here are a few things that you can know. We'll just give you a basic understanding of why your inner being sees things the way your inner being sees things. First, your inner being loves you always. Your inner being only loves you and always. So if there's anything that you're doing with your thoughts about anything that you've lived before or now or that you're thinking about living that doesn't include you really liking you, you're going to get off base of your inner being right now. That's just for starters. You cannot beat up on yourself and stay in concert with your inner being. Your inner being will not go there. Your inner being will not go there. Next, you can't beat up on anybody else either. Now that's where Esther started having a little trouble. She didn't mind us <laughs> always loving her. <laughs> but when it came to other people, she would say, apparently you need more information about them, Abraham, because... <laughs> I'm sure if you knew what I know, then you would feel more like I feel. But we were stubborn. We would never go there with her. And she came to understand, you all do too, that because we never go there, that if she is going to continue to push against unwanted, then she's going to hold herself not only apart from us, which feels awful, but she's going to hold herself apart from who she is, which is us. Two important things. Your inner being will not talk smack about you and your inner being will not talk smack about anybody else. Next, your inner being knows what's in your vortex and feels such eager anticipation of the never-ending discovery that will surprise and delight you. So it's like this treasure hunt. Now you put all the treasures there, but you don't recognize them anymore because you put them there so incrementally. And in the meantime, they've been growing, they've been becoming more, law of attraction's been gathering the cooperative components. And so the pieces or ingredients that you've been putting there have grown into full blown life experiences that are ripe and ready for your reception. Your inner being is always revealing everything your inner being knows about what's in your vortex. But your ability to comprehend it has to do with your receptive mode. You've got to be somewhere in the vicinity. So, you got to like yourself, you got to like others, and you got to feel anticipation of everything you want coming to be. That's the bargain you struck when you decided to come. You said, I'll like me, I'll like others, I will appreciate and respect the contrast in which I live, I will give birth to lots of new ideas, and I will anticipate the full-blown living of those ideas. That was the contract that you didn't sign, but that you vibrationally knew coming into this time-space reality. Oh, and then there's one last thing. You said this, and you meant this with everything that you are, and I will live happily ever after. I will live happily ever after. I am an eternal being. I cannot cease to be. I cannot cease my consciousness. I cannot shut myself down. I cannot come to an end. I've come so far. There's so much joyous momentum. There is so much joyous momentum. So you said, I'll join my joyous momentum and I will allow it to come to full manifested fruition in this leading edge place, this time and space where the ideas blossom and bloom, where you can see them, and all the depths and magnificence and brilliance of the colors, where you can hear them, all the rhythms, all the pieces, all the sounds, all the symphony of it, where you can smell all the fragrances of it and taste all the flavors of it and touch 
all the tactile feelings of it. In other words, this time-space reality is where your thoughts turn to the things and you are ravenous for it, you see. You came as a creator to do all of that, to experience all of that, and to do nothing less than that, you see. So it's logical to us that when you have a little thought like, I don't like me, ouch. I don't look too good today, ouch. I should have done something different last year. Ow, 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 ow. I hate that person. Ow! That person should go to hell. Ow! Oh, this glorious guidance system that you are aware of, aren't you? You just didn't know how personal it was, how about you it is, about what you think it is. It's not about anybody else. It's only about what you think about anybody else. It's not about anything except the relationship between what you think and what your inner being is thinking about the same thing in the same moment. Do you have any choice if you want to feel good other than the think good feeling thoughts? What we think we're really addressing here is your, we love you so much, unnecessary tolerance for discomfort. You've sort of grown calluses, have asbestos hands. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. I've insulated myself against my own negative emotion. And while it's not burning up my hand, it's destroying my financial well-being. Or, or, or. We know that we are bordering on ridiculous here, but we are wanting to get your attention that it's time to begin directing your thoughts to synthesize and harmonize with those of your inner being in order to live the manifestations that are so important. It's interesting because everything that we want to talk to you about is about feeling because we know that everything you want, all of these manifestations, whether it's cars or houses or empires or relationships or circumstances or events or movements, anything that you want, you want because you will feel better in the having of it. So if we can convince you that you do have control over your emotion, and it only takes a little bit of conscious awareness to get good at it, then the manifestations will follow. But almost every time we talk with you about that, dear heart humans freak out and think that we're trying to talk you out of your manifestations as if they're not spiritual, when nothing could be more spiritual than the leading edge of spirit. Manifestations are important. They are what you all, we all came for. Think about the idea of something beautiful. Just think about beauty and then open your eyes and look outside at this day. Esther stood and looked out her window this morning. She hardly could make herself go take a shower. She just wanted to keep looking out the window at the beauty of this day. It's almost like she could see the fresh high air. She couldn't get her window open. <laughs> So she had to imagine what it smelled like out there. <laughs> but those manifestations are what you devour with your eyes or with your tongue or with your ears. It's more than just the thought. That's why you don't want to do the groundwork of preparing the thought. You want to just get right to the good stuff. But if you haven't done the groundwork and prepared yourself for the receiving mode of the good stuff, then when the manifestation comes, it isn't the good stuff. Because you're always in some receptive mode. You're in the receptive mode of the joyful being that you are, or you're in the receptive mode of the miserable being that you are. Or you're in the receptive mode of the overwhelmed being that you are, or the angry being, or the hopeful being, or the knowing being. In other words, you're always in the receptive mode of something. And what's manifesting shows you what you're in the receptive mode of, you see. And we know this is an extreme example. This hot stove means that you really, really want something and you're really, really not in the vibrational vicinity of it. But you could be. Let's say that you want $100,000 and you need it right away. Let's say you more than want it, you need it. You really need it. 200 would be even better. 300 would be three times as good. 
You could use a whole lot of money and you could use it fast. You want it and you want it now. So you speak it out to the universe, not for the first time today, for the hundred thousandth time today. So you've spoken it out and yet you really don't expect a hundred thousand dollars to just drop in your lap today. You don't check your bank account every hour. Did it, is it there yet? Is it there that? Abraham, how do I turn these thoughts to things? How do I get it out of the vortex into the bank? Tell me now, tell me now, tell me now. I want it in the bank and I want it in the bank now. Well, you're not going to likely get it in the bank right now, this red hot minute. There's some other things that you are going to want to do first. But the important thing that we want to convey to you is you could find a feeling of prosperity today. You could do it in the next hour. You could do it in the next 10 minutes. You could do it in the next three or four minutes. You could focus in a way that makes you feel the same prosperity that your inner being feels. And for a moment, you could be in a receptive mode where an idea could come to you. And if you could continue to find that feeling place, not needing the condition to change in order to find the feeling place, but finding the feeling place because you're capable of doing it, because it's your natural state of being, and because your vortex represents it, if you could find the feeling place of your vortex, if you could find the feeling place of your inner being, if you could feel your confidence even before the money's in the bank, if you could feel expectation about it, then more ideas flow. Because the same process turns your thoughts to your things that turns anybody's thoughts to anybody's things. Nobody's doing it differently. Thoughts turn to things. You just can't think against your thoughts without turning yourself against the things that you want. You can't think about what you want and then notice that it's not there and get any closer to the idea that will bring it. You can't long for it and hurt for it. You can't suffer over your ideas. Oh, I had the best idea, ah, but it won't ever work. I have such a good idea. It seemed so good in the beginning and then I realized that I'm a failure. <laughs> have we taken this too far? <laughs> we don't want you to ever forget. We want you to find your emotional sweet spot more of the time. Because you can find your emotional sweet spot anytime you decide that you want to. Even if it just means sitting and quieting your mind or finding anything to think about that doesn't poke at you in some way. And as you do that, your vibration <laughs> gets higher and higher and higher and higher and closer and closer and closer to who you really are. And then some of those thoughts begin to turn to some of those things and then you become a believer. If you haven't goosed yourself all up to believe that action trumps everything and that action matters so much and that I've got to act, if you haven't done that flawed thing to yourself, so you're able to sit there while your vortex gestate, while more things are worked out, and your singular intent is just to be in the receiving mode so that you get it when it's ready. You get ready for what's getting ready for you. That's the best way we can describe it. It's getting ready for you. It's gathering the cooperative components. Maybe all of them haven't quite been gathered yet. It's getting ready for you to get ready for it. Well, when you're ready, you don't say, mm, I wonder, you say, don't care what you think, don't care what you think, don't care what you think, I'm going this way. And until it feels like that, it's going to be sort of limpy, gimpy anyway. This energy that creates worlds, when you get an impulse from this receptive mode, you want to fly with it. So you could pretty much conclude that if it doesn't feel like that, then you might want to give it a little more time. Because one who's connected to the stream is more powerful than a million who aren't. There's so much leverage in that kind of connection. Sure, you can go down the road and do more contrast and put more in the vortex and that's all fun. But when you're feeling like you're feeling, it's time to turn on the gas. It's time to focus. Focusing is the most powerful mechanism that you have as long as you are in a fairly good emotional state of being. If you don't feel good, don't focus. It'll make things a lot worse. If your friends say, hey man, you need to do something, say, not right now, believe me, trust me. Trust me, I gotta lay low. I'm laying low right now, I'm laying low. But when you're feeling great, focus.